The federal leaders debate was a colossal waste of time. The CBC fact checks Trudeau's opponents rather than fact checking Trudeau. And the Canadian press highlights undecided voters, all leftists who hate conservatives. It's Fake News Friday. I'm Candace Malcolm, and this is The Candace Malcolm Show. Hi everyone, happy Friday. Thank you so much for tuning in today. And I hope you enjoyed our live coverage last night of the federal leaders debate. We did a, what, four and a half hour live stream giving you analysis and opinion, breaking down the issues, talking about all things federal politics, including Justin Trudeau and his spectacular, colossal fall from grace. It looked like he was going to get a majority in this election. That's why he called this election. And he's so far from that. You could tell by his performance at debate last night, he was uptight, he was angry. He was just really not in a good place, not in a good position. And it's been such a fall from grace considering that he had that stable minority government that wasn't going anywhere. There was no reason to call this election. And I'm sure that he is deeply, deeply regretting it as we see Aaron O'Toole just outperforming him all across the board. O'Toole was very strong last night. And so was Jagmeet Singh. The only one that wasn't very strong was Justin Trudeau. So it was a bad, bad night for Trudeau. But I will just say this, as much as these uh, leaders debates are helpful in sort of illuminating the characteristics and personalities of these leaders and helping us understand a little bit more about their policies. Overall, last night, the debate was just a huge waste of time. It was a failure. This is, again, more reason why we should not have the federal government being the one in charge of this. We went through this last night, but previously, before Trudeau came around, the debates were organized by private media companies. There'd be a variety of debates. Different companies would team up with different groups, and we would have debates that, that sort of span the issues, span the ideological uh, range in terms of what people might be interested in. Now we only have these two government-led debates, one in French, one in English, and of course there was another French debate that the private uh, television station TVA in Quebec organized last week. So, so uh, so French speakers got two debates, English speakers only got one, only got this terrible one organized by the government last night. It was long, it dragged on. They really didn't cover the issues that mattered to most Canadians. So we spent the first hour and 15 minutes, maybe hour and a half of this debate on issues that can really just be described as niche, special interest topics, talking about uh, climate change. They spent a lot of time on climate change. They spent a lot of time on reconciliation. When you look at the polls and what Canadians say really matters to them, especially people who had the intention of voting conservative, uh, the top issues for them are jobs in the economy, government spending and debt and getting out of the pandemic. And we didn't get to those topics at all. There was not a single economic question asked until the last half hour of the debate last night. By then, most people had tuned out because it was just so drawn out. We heard so many activist questions. I mean, we spent more time talking about universal pharmacare and talking about uh, universal basic income, which are really fringe far left ideas. Uh, we're talking full on socialism when you when you get into universal basic income. The idea is the government just pays you to have a basic Basic living even if you don't have a job and so you know instead of talking about the important issues how do we get out of COVID how do we restart our economy how do we make sure that Canadians uh, can afford to buy a home how do we have, uh, make sure that there are enough jobs and that we have an economy that's strong enough uh, for the future instead of talking about government debt we have over a trillion dollars in government debt barely, barely touched on those issues. Instead, we were talking about these very niche issues. And as usual, we saw, you know, there were some solid questions. I thought Mercedes Stevenson did a decent job. I thought the moderator herself did a decent job, although I didn't like the format. Uh, however, we did see the typical um, activism in the journalism. So instead of asking sort of open-ended questions, allowing the, de uh, the, the leaders to debate the issue, we had journalists going up there, acting like activists, acting like politicians themselves, trying to push their own niche issues rather than talking about the issues that matter to Canadians. So here's a couple of examples of what that looked like last night. You said in 2019 that Canadians should never have to make the, and these are your words, impossible choice between paying for medications or putting food on the table. We have seen you, particularly in these recent months, willing to spend billions of dollars on programs that matter to your government. Daycare would be another example of that. Why is there no money in your platform or in your most recent budget for a national pharmacare program is it no longer a priority? And should you not just tell Canadians that, sir? For millions of voters, this is the climate change election. Uh, Mr. O'Toole, my question, next question is for you. You know, you voted against the UN Declaration on the Rights of Indigenous People that would share decision-making power with Indigenous people. 
over what happens on their land, and you also want to criminalize Indigenous dissent that's expressed through blockades or protests. One of the plans that you've laid out uh, to tackle affordability is a guaranteed livable income. You mentioned it just moments ago. Give people a set amount of money to deal with their lives. Mr. O'Toole, you recommend vaccinations, but you won't make your candidates get them. You have a climate plan, but you won't dump a candidate that shares climate conspiracies. You're on record supporting the LGBTQ2 community, but you allowed half your MPs to vote against legislation protecting them. You know, federal forces, including the RCMP and the Department of Fisheries and Oceans, have been used throughout Canada's history to prevent First Nations from exercising their treaty rights to fish and to hunt and to defend land and water. This is happening right now on both coasts. After 150 plus years of lies and abuse to my people, and as Prime Minister, what will you do to rebuild the trust between First Nations and the federal government? So if you want to see more of our coverage of the debate, uh, go, go on over to uh, TNC.news or check it out on YouTube or Facebook. We, you can see the whole live stream. It was about four and a half hours. Uh, two of those hours were the debate itself. So you can see the first hour, our analysis. And then during the scrums, we also did more analysis. Our own Andrew Lawton was also in attendance at the debate. He was able to ask some great questions to the leader. So it was a great opportunity for True North to be able to participate in that way. Now I want to talk a little bit about the CBC. It is Fake News Friday, and I, I think that the debate last night was fake news. I think that that qualifies and, and we can easily classify that as fake news, just given how out of touch it was with the issues of Canadians. It was such an Ottawa-centric debate. It, it didn't touch on the issues that matter to people in the West. It didn't touch on Alberta at all. The only time they talked about Alberta was when they were bashing the oil sands, as usual. We didn't touch on the issues that really matter to Canadians, and that is such a microcosm of the Ottawa bubble, of the things in Ottawa that people care about, the politicians, the journalists, the sort of, you know, elitist class that that, that lives there. We, we only learned about the issues they cared about and we didn't really touch on the broader issues that the Canadian population cares about. That's fake news in and of itself. There's a couple other uh, articles that I want to highlight today. So first this stood out to me, CBC did a fact check of the English debate and this is just so typical CBC. So they go through and highlight some of the claims that were made at the debate last night and if you go through it okay the first one is about trudeau so so that's the first for the cbc because throughout this entire campaign they have only fact checked claims made about justin trudeau not claims made by justin trudeau so you see multiple fact checks on aaron o'toole multiple fact checks on jagmeet singh and zero fact checks on justin trudeau despite all of the lies and misnomers that he repeats on a daily basis they never fact check that so in this fact check they did do one fact check on justin trudeau but that is compared compared to three fact checks on Aaron O'Toole and three fact checks on Jagmeet Singh. That's just so typical CBC. They will fact check claims about Trudeau rather than claims that Trudeau made. And even when they are fact checking uh, Trudeau, they always give him the benefit of the doubt. So the first one was on sexual misconduct. Uh, Justin Trudeau says, yes, these problems continue in workplaces across the country, particularly in the military. That's unacceptable. That's why we've taken even stronger measures. So they say this is a difficult subject for the Trudeau government, talking about this liberal MP who represented Kitchener, who had multiple sexual uh, complaints against him and how he was still able to run as a candidate until it came out in the media. And then it, it does say that the Trudeau government has launched an external review of sexual misconduct in the military. And so supposedly those are the measures. So they're kind of fact-checking Trudeau, but they're also saying that he is correct. So this, this this next one really stands out, um, and I'll, I'll go through it in a bit more detail. So Conservative leader Aaron O'Toole last night said to Justin Trudeau about greenhouse gases and carbon emission. Again, they spent probably half an hour, maybe closer to 45 minutes on climate change last night, which is an issue that if you're a liberal voter, you really, really, really care about climate change. If you're not a liberal voter and you're just a regular Canadian, or if you're a conservative voter, climate change is pretty low on the list of priorities right now. And again, just the, the amount of time that they spent on this topic last night shows how out of touch the organizers are with everyday Canadians. But regardless, so Aaron O'Toole said to Trudeau on the topic of greenhouse gas emissions, you have never made a target, Mr. Trudeau. And so the fact check here notes that Jagmeet Singh and the NDP have also made this attack against Trudeau on greenhouse gas emissions, saying that emissions have only risen since the Trudeau government signed the Paris Agreement, the climate agreement back in 2016. So the attack against Trudeau is that he hasn't met his emissions and that greenhouse gases have gone up. CBC admits that this is true. So let me just read this section right here. It says, this is true. According to official statistics on greenhouse gas emissions, emissions have risen consistently from 2016 to 2019, but only 
by a small amount from 707 megatons of carbon dioxide equivalent to 730 in 2019. Emissions are rising in Canada while they are on a downward trajectory in the United States, United Kingdom, and the European Union. So the fact here, this is supposed to be a fact check, the fact is true. Trudeau has not lowered emissions and greenhouse gas emissions have gone up. But rather than just leave it at that and say, this is a true attack against Justin Trudeau, the CBC has to put some more context in there and change your opinion a little bit to say, but actually Trudeau is right. So the next paragraph right here, it says, but experts have told CBC that this line of attack is misleading. Okay, so when you attack Trudeau, again, even if it's true, it's still misleading. So let's see why why the CBC says this. It says, policies introduced by the government to reduce emissions, such as carbon pricing in 2019, will have an effect on greenhouse gas emissions, but not immediately. That means the government could still meet the target in the future. Okay, you get that? So even though it is a true line of attack, the CBC have found some experts out there who happen to like the liberal policy of carbon taxes, and therefore they won't completely rule this out as being untrue. They give a Trudeau credit. This is just so typical of the CBC. And yes, it is fake news. One more story I want to cover today, which is this Canadian press story. So they went out there and they tried to find some undecided voters to give Canadians an understanding of what's at stake in the election. So the Canadian press, and again, Canadian press is a wire service. So this appeared all across the media, CTV, Globe, all the, a lot of places uh, the, the, these wire stories appear. So the CP headline reads, the undecideds, three Canadian voters still unsure of who to support. Okay, so Canadian press is trying to tell us that this is like, a representative sample of Canadians who are still deciding who to vote. So we highlight three people. The first one is a guy from Montreal. He's 36 years old. He works in tech and we're going to try to figure out what, you know, who he's going to vote for. So it says that he's ruled out voting for the Liberals, the Conservatives and the Bloc. So basically he's between the NDP and the Green Party. In other words, this guy is on the fringe far left. He is considering voting for the Socialist Party or if not, he's just going to throw his vote away with a Green Party that's polling at 2% federally. So, you know, this is not a representative person of the party. Anyone interested in voting for a protest party like the Green Party, especially one that's in absolute shambles right now, uh, the entire focus of Anna Mae Paul, almost every time she spoke, was basically just apologizing for how terrible her party is and how it's, it's a total mess for her. So the fact that this guy is considering voting for the Greens shows that he is not at all representative representative of Canadians. So next we have another individual who, this guy lives in Calgary, he's got a wife and three kids, he moved from South Sudan 20 years ago, presumably as a refugee, and he says that he voted for the Liberal Party in the past, including in 2019. So here is a person from Calgary who likes Trudeau. This guy is in the very, very small minority. If you're in Alberta and you're voting for the Liberals, you are part of a fringe because the number one party in Alberta, everyone knows, is the Conservatives. They win huge majorities and they win almost all the seats, if not every single seat in Alberta. And the secondary party in Alberta is the NDP. The NDP are the opposition out there. They were the former uh, provincial government. So liberals are really in the space that, you know, it is very much a conservative versus NDP province left versus right. And if you're a liberal voter, it means that you're pretty much out of touch with the rest of the province. The province just hates liberals in, in that way. So it, it would sort of be like going to uh, Montreal and try to find a guy who votes conservative. It's, it's just, you know, the, the conservatives are an afterthought in Montreal, just like the liberals are an afterthought in Alberta. And then the CP story throws in the fact that this guy hates Jason Kenney, hates the United Conservative Party of Canada. Uh, here's a quote that they threw in. In Alberta, the UCP, which is the United Conservative Party, is consistently targeting the Alberta Health Services for cuts. And that puts Albertans in danger as access to health care is becoming less easy. So super politicized. This is not, none of this is true. This is all just media propaganda. The idea that Kenny is cutting uh, health care. Obviously, it's not true. He's increasing health care in Alberta. So it, really, this guy is not representative 
at all of people who live in Calgary, but CP found, you know, a Calgarian who votes for Trudeau, which is really rare. And third and finally, the CP highlights a young lady from Newfoundland. This woman is pregnant in her third trimester of a high risk pregnancy, we learn. And the issue that she cares about in this election is universal pharmacare because she doesn't want to have to pay for her own prescription drugs because of a pre existing uh, condition that she has with regards to fertility and her pregnancy. So, again, this is pretty much much a, a niche issue. Uh, she says that the things that she cares about um, are the uh, pharmacare and having the government pay for her drugs. So here we learn that this undecided voter is actually a big fan of the NDP and that's who she's going to vote for probably because she likes the idea of government funded drugs. She also says that the NDP's values closely align with her own including ending racism and promoting LGBTQ community. I'll just say that all parties have that as a goal. There, there's no party that is pro-racism and there's no party that is anti-LGBTQ. So it's a little silly that someone would say that, but hey, if you uh, connect with Jugmeet, uh, th th those are obviously Jugmeet Singh's strong points if you're uh, progressive on the far left. So again, we have three voters. None of them are representative of Canadians. They all classify as being part of a fringe, just given where they are and what parties they vote for. So rather than finding even someone who might closely resemble a centrist or perhaps even center right who might be considering who to vote on that side, uh, the CP highlight these three leftists and try to tell us that they're representative of all Canadians. So three highlighted voters, three leftists. That's exactly what we have come to to expect from the biased legacy media. It's fake news and that's why it made our fake news Friday. Thank you so much for tuning in. Have a wonderful weekend and we will be back again next week. I'm Candace Malcolm and this is the Candace Malcolm Show.